We are Popcorn, Piss, and Vinegar, giving you a raw take on movies, television, and pop culture. My name's Chris. I'm Scott. GB4. How you doing, fellas? Doing all right. How you doing, fella? Doing good. Are we in the holiday festive mood yet? I'm, I'm um, always in about the holiday to be. Festive mood. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on. That's it. All you got to do What's is wear name? wear green headband, and you already got red and green for That's Christmas. That's right. Dude. That's it. Santa was a ginger. <laughs> That's it. Santa was a ginger before he went all white. Huh? That's right. That's it, man. Still I'm looking for this. This this was beard. He? Yeah. Don't you watch Santa Claus is coming to town? The cartoon. He was a ginger. Okay. That is sh- okay. Yeah. Come on, documented TV facts. Okay, that's what my beard's for. My beard's my like everybody invests for their four hundred one k. My beard is my four hundred one k because when I get old, I'm gonna be when it gets white, I'm gonna be a mall Santa. There that's you it. go. <laughs> that's it, man. Gain about a hundred pounds. I'm gonna and hit you'll be that in Popeyes shape. every day. Maybe if you're gonna happen. do it, do go. it right. That's and, right. And, and get an order of beignets to wash it down Absolutely, with. Absolutely, yeah. All right. Well, let's hit this shit. Okay. First of all, trailers. Um, I don't know what trailers you guys got to see. I but didn't see all of them. I've seen some. Uh, Ready Player One trailer two. Have you yep. seen that yet? Yes. Saw it. Yeah, that was real. Dude, I'm looking forward to that fucking movie. It just looks yeah. cool, man. I I understand the pop culture excitement that is inside of this film, but other than that, I it doesn't. I don't really think it's so much. I mean, the pop culture excitement stuff's cool, but man, it just looks fucking cool. Like, I mean, the special effects and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. That looks man, really, the, I have a problem with the the people look, the faces of the people. I don't know if that's supposed to be that way. Like, they just look. You're they talking look, about when they exist within Oasis? Yeah. Well, yeah, they're supposed to look like video game characters. Okay. Yeah. All right, then I I'll give it to more. Okay. Yeah, I, the the scene that keeps impressing me is not so much the stuff that's happening in Oasis, but that rad ass trailer park that your boy lives yeah. in. I mean, it's like that looks a, great. Yeah, it's like this hive, you know, like a city hive of fucking trailers. It's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Did you? Uh, are we going to discuss in the news section what has, has happened with the author of the book? No, uh, no, no what uh, uh, well, happened? Uh, well, apparently. Uh, Spielberg loves the movie so much and the author loves the movie so much that he's writing a sequel. I guess he's calling oh, it Ready cool. Player 2. I don't know, but uh, that's how excited Ready Player one they two. are. Well, I there think that go. he should go totally 80s and just call it Ready Player One, the sequel. That there would you be, go. That'd be pretty cool. Ready Player One, two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Electric Boogaloo. There it there is. Oh, my God. All right, uh, Jurassic World 2. Did we see that trailer? Missed yeah. It. It's because I don't watch football. Yeah, well, no, I saw it on the internet. I forgot. You know? I, I don't know what I was doing that night, but I totally... Oh, I was making rock rehearsal. I forgot all about it. I mean, it looks it. it looks like yeah. fucking Jurassic World. I mean, the only yeah. thing with it is the premise looks a little bit different what this time. What is the premise? The premise is, is um, I guess that the Dinosaur Island is imploding. Like, it's having volcanic eruptions and all this different shit. So and, they uh, have to save the dinosaurs. They have to save the dinosaurs. From Extinction Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, uh, our Lost World Part Two, Electric Boogaloo, and uh, Jeff Goldblum, Lava Boogaloo, actually. Right. Jeff Goldblum reprises his role and comes yeah, back. I'm excited about like, that, I'm just like Lost World. That. But they already said that it's a cameo. He doesn't uh, have a main part in the movie. Right. Um, he goes before Congress, and they're also saying uh, they well they won't admit whether Sam Neill is in the movie or not. I mean, he's oh. in the movie, so yeah. I'm, I don't know. He was in Thor. Why not? Right. And yeah. so is Jeff Goldblum. Yep. Yep. So there it is. Bring it on. All right. Um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which is the uh, yeah. the Lego guys take on an animated Spider-Man. I, oh, all right. I saw that they were doing it, but I didn't go further into that. Yeah, yeah. They have a trailer out, and it has uh, both Peter Parker and Miles Morales. The animation looks fucking cool. It does. Yeah, it looks it, really neat. Yeah, this, it looked really badass. Is this a TV show or a movie? It's a movie released in theaters. Really? Spider-Man yeah. Into the Spider-Verse. Hmm. It doesn't tie into the MCU. It's its own thing. Good. All right. So, and yeah. um, also, this is a trailer, not a movie that we're going to get. I think we're going to get it either on Blu-ray or DVD, but Batman Manga. Did that you see shit. that shit? Did you, there's no. two trailers for that. I only saw one. Oh, my. Yeah. Man, that shit looks great. It's uh, Batman. What? Batman takes place in feudal Japan, yeah. and he's huh. a samurai, and the More Joker- importantly, the yeah, Joker. The Joker looks fucking horrifying. Yes. Yeah. Like he looks um, great. instead wow. of instead of him having the paint, he has a samurai kabuki mask that's painted up Whoa. like the Joker. It is fucking cool looking, man. Yeah. So yeah, um, anybody who Harley hasn't seen Quinn, those, uh, Robin. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're all, all in it. it. 
and it's spoken in its native tongue. So I'm sure we're going to subtitle on that thing. So, which I prefer. I know a lot of people hate subtitles, but I, I, I'd rather see the actor's emotion in their native language. I don't mind reading if, if, gonna, if it's fucking. Well I know done. this is this is a this go, this goes into what you're just saying. There is a a show on Netflix called Dark right yeah. now, mm-hmm. uh, and it's a German program. Yeah, yeah. We announced this on the show several months ago. This was going to be how now Netflix is actually relying on international production companies since they've spread into the international market. Well, I'm watching it right now, and it's German with English subtitles, Uh but it defaults for the U.S. version. It defaults to the U.S. language. So when it starts... It's lip synced. Yeah, I actually thought it was, oh, this is in English, and then you catch that it's not. But more importantly, the, the voice actors aren't really that good. So I went yeah. back to the native language and I just read it and it's it, and it's better just like you said it's, yeah, it's way better. Yeah, I, I prefer to see it. It's like same thing with Seven Samurai. I mean, that movie's fucking long, but man, it is so awesome. Yeah. And it's better to watch in in Japanese, watch it and just read the subtitles. Yeah. Yeah, so when I get around to watching Dark, which actually I've been watching Lore on uh, Amazon Prime. I tried. Um, I like the podcast better. Okay. I actually don't enjoy the uh the TV show. I've watched 3 episodes. It's only six. I'm gonna watch it to see what it offers in terms of um, in terms of of what happens. You know, th- what it adds additional to the podcast. Okay. But uh, yeah, I like the podcast way better. Like they're they're short, fast. They're like 15 minutes long, loaded with information. Really interesting. So yeah, I'm I'm uh, I think I'm I'm pretty much out of a uh, lore. Dark, yeah, dark's good. I'm hmm. three in so far, and it's it's pretty interesting. As yeah. long as we're talking about uh, shows, television shows. We're that talking are... about shows with subtitles. Well, okay. <laughs> shows from... Come on, That's okay. John. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, oh, I'm, you know, I, I, I watched Tin Star, uh, and I had a ton of work to do, but I couldn't not watch it on Amazon Prime. It's really, 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 really good. Okay. Tim Roth is in it. Super dark, super dark. What's the uh, thematic of the show? Like, what, what's it? What's the, it about? Uh, revenge. Cool. Right. Uh, and, and there was a movie I think made by John Sayles in the eighties called Ten Star, and it's kind of loosely based on it, but it's its own thing, and it's uh, really, really, really good. Cool. Good enough that, in spite of the fact that I had a lot of work to do, I had it on another little screen. This isn't so. This, so this there's some recommendations. You know, this isn't Cell Block ninety nine all over again. It's not. It? Okay. No. Well, there's it's all not. your recommendations, and if you want to jump back to something a little bit older, Netflix has now put on season one and season two of Ash vs. Evil Dead, oh, and I sweet. highly, great. highly recommend watching. I lost it. my stars contact. That's good. It's fucking great. All right, so let's get on to some news here. Quentin Tarantino and J.J. Abrams have teamed up to write a new R-rated Star Trek movie. When interviewed, Tarantino said he loved the episode Yesterday's Enterprise, which was part of the Next Uh Generation TV series. In the episode, the crew finds the previous Enterprise C, which overwrites the timeline, and the crew has to make great sacrifices to correct things. No word on if if it will be the... uh, if it'll be a new adventure with the current crew, you know, with Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto, or if it's going to revert back to the old gener- you know, next gen crew with, uh, you know, with uh, Patrick Stewart and Gates McFadden and Jonathan Frakes. Huh. But wow. Patrick Stewart said it has been his dream to work with Quentin Tarantino. And even though he said he would not in this case, he will return as Jean-Luc Picard to work he with would. Quentin Tarantino. Right. Yes. That may be. Because initially it was J.J. Abrams and Qu- Quentin Tarantino talking, so I assumed it was the Chris Pine crew. Yeah, well, I mean, it's g- going to be interesting to see it, where it goes, and and maybe this is the shot. I, I mean, I don't know. Star Trek, their their fan base is so so fucking weird. Um, hmm. they're like they're, they're like Star Wars. They're 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 big fucking crybabies, but they're crybabies over different shit. Like it, it's yeah. kind of it's kind of weird, you know. And I'm thinking that the Star Trek purist, if you say rated R, it has automatically shut them down. Hmm. Fair enough. But what I will say is that Quentin Tarantino has directed episodic television. He sure did he a two parter in CSI, and he also did ER. And they were b- both 
series, he did a great job. Yeah. They're yeah. really, really good. Does movies, which is what this will be, right? This is yeah. a movie. Yeah, yeah, this will be a movie. Right. Um, allegedly. I mean, that's what he says, you know. But I don't think they'll be cursing, though. I'm pretty sure there will be a lot of violence, which I'm okay with. I thought initially that he was going to direct it, but he said that he's likely not to direct it. He's what? going to write it with J.J. Abrams, and he's going to write huh. the movie. And, um, I mean, there you go. Hey, look, dude, look at True Romance. He wrote that. He didn't direct it. And that was a fucking great movie. It was. The movie was awesome. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm down uh, with this Dust take. Dawn, I'm, too, I'm not, right? yeah. I, yeah. I, no, no, no. He just starred in that. I don't think he, 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 co- yeah. he co-wrote Robert, it, huh? Robert yeah. Rodriguez. Directed. Directed. Uh, he, yeah. He didn't co-write he was, that? He, no, he, he, I think he co-wrote it, and he's saying. in it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, as far as Tarantino is concerned, I mean, dude, I, I'll go. See, I, I don't think all of his movies are are home runs, but I mean, I like the majority of his movies. I sure. like him, and, and I, I like I'll, Star I'll Trek, yeah. so I would see it. Yeah, sure, man. Exactly. But you know, we'll see how the Star Trek fans react to this because, what? according to Star Trek fans, it is within Gene Roddenberry's vision to give away Star Trek for free. So why in the fuck would you hey, pay for a movie? You can say that. But I, I've heard from numerous fans that I know that that Star Trek TV show is good. It oh, yeah. is. They're paying for it, it is very good. Yeah, well, I'm just busting the balls of uh, crybabies. Yeah, so. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. In the wake of the Kevin Spacey sexual harassment bombshell, House of Cards announces they will bow out with its final season, focusing on Claire Underwood as the lead character. Claire Underwood is played by Robin Wright. Is. Yep. And I guess Frank. I mean, are we going to assassinate him? Is he just going to go away? Is is going to be political suicide? Um, I, fuck, I don't know. You know, I'm sure they'll just open with photographs of you know Frank Underwood assassinated and just blah blah blah. Yeah, I mean, he's still a producer on it though, isn't he? Oh, I don't know. I think I uh-huh. think he they've removed him entirely from the show, if I'm not mistaken. God. Yeah, he's yeah. he's like a race from existence. I got to say, before all this all this controversy went down that i think was the direction that the show was going in and scott I actually think it predicted was that. always the direction of that show but well I, I talked to my brother who watched the first three seasons and he, he said man have you ever watched house of cards i said no he's like oh my god it's so good and he's like frank underwood's a fucking asshole but dude his wife is such a cunt so i mean it seems <laughs> there... to me it seems to me that it he you know she'll be able to carry this show fine without Absolutely. him and and for one season to at least give hardcore fans of that show a send off, which is always a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Because so many people love shows and they <laughs> well, get fucked this with it show, being canceled. And it's I was still in for this show all the way to the end, and then this happened. It's like, well, there it is. Yeah, I mean, dude, I tried to watch The Ref the other night with uh, Dennis Leary, which is like one of my favorite Christmas yeah, movies. Yeah. But dude, I, which watching Spacey is like I couldn't even watch it. Yeah. Oh wow. I it's, was like, fuck, I man. I, I don't feel like watching right? watching this shit. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Agreed. So there it is. Bummer. All right. Earlier this year, Westworld had to halt production due to a bad injury on the set to one of its actors. It said that production has been halted yet again due to the wildfires in California. That shit is serious. They can't catch a fucking break. No. You know, but really, honestly, the people who can't catch a break are the unfortunate victims that get caught in the middle of this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fucking horrible. I've lost my house to 15 feet of water. I can't imagine what it's like for everything to be burned up, you know? At least when the water comes in and it goes out, you can at least still walk through the fucking thing. Right. It's yeah. almost like you know? a tornado. Yeah, this year, I mean, it's just horrible. It's weird. I, I actually worked at the fairgrounds when it burned down, and yeah. I had to go in and clean shit up, and it was, uh, yeah, it's it's different. Yeah, it is very different. Than, the, you know, than the floods. All right. All righty. It has been announced that Jordan Peele will be relaunching the Twilight Zone. Um, huh. That show is going to join Star Trek Discovery on CBS All Access. But mm. unlike Gene Roddenberry, Jordan Peele's you know vision is to get fucking paid. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, when it comes to the thing with the Twilight Zone, the Twilight Zone is one of my all-time favorite television shows. I have the definitive collection on DVD. I have like spot episodes on VHS when that shit was still in vogue. I still watch the fucking marathon at my parents' house on New Year's Day. Mm-hmm. I love that show. But man, with the rise of things like Black Mirror and shit like that, that Why is kind of like a modern day take on the Twilight Zone. You know, man, I I don't know. But if it, I don't know where he goes with this. 
I mean, Black Mirror is obviously a, a very tech heavy influence. I mean, he could take it to a like a, a sociology, a sociology, a, like a social level. He could take it a comedy level. He could take it to a, a horror level. He could, he yeah, could but I go mean, anywhere but, he wants. But and not everything have to... you just said, Black Mirror does that already. Yeah, but Black Mirror is, but it's still in that tech world. Like, well, I mean, yeah, because we're surrounded by it now. I mean, the right, Twilight maybe. Zone was the atomic scare, and you know, and 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 the uh, the rise of communism and all that shit. It was sign of the times. Yeah, well, then it was a pretty good time to bring it back. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is. You know, well, we'll, see. we'll again. see. I like Get Out. I like Jordan Peele. I think he's a so fucking I. talented guy, and I love yeah. the Twilight Zone. I will certainly give it a chance. I may, I may put five dollars down for it, or five ninety nine. There you go. Yep. Oh, this bullshit. Danny Glover and Mel Gibson have been confirmed to return to a sequel of Lethal Weapon. Are, Are they, they getting too old get, for this shit? God damn it, John! <laughs> get the fuck out of here, please. I mean, dude, look. Lethal Weapon 1 is a great movie. 2, 3, and 4 oh. have some kind of funny kind of moments in them and shit, but it is not the first one. And it turned into... Like, I mean, Bugs Bunny. I mean, that's yeah. pretty much what it was, you know? I'll shit on it, but when it comes out in a the theater, I'm going <laughs> to see it. Let me know how that turns out. Absolutely. All right, Ben Affleck will likely return for Flashpoint, but not for Matt Reeves' movie, The Batman. John Hamm has been campaigning to take over the role of Batman. I will so. say this. I don't care anymore. <laughs> yep. I'm pretty much there with you, man. I, yeah. I will go see these movies, but... That's it. Yeah. I, I don't I, I won't don't be there on opening day. If I can make the time to catch it, I'll catch it. I don't really give a fuck anymore. Flashpoint does not excite me. Um, if you show me one movie where you have a scared kid who's unsure of himself and just learning his powers to give me one movie later to where he can rip through the fucking space-time continuum and control the speed force, especially when you have a television show that did it a hundred thousand times better. Yeah, I, I'm really not interested. I mean, I'll go see it and get excited. I'll go see it, but I'm just if they're if the fanboys and the critics like it. I mean, I'll I'll buy the hype. Oh no, I'll go see it to shit on it and complain. I, that's that's the only reason I'm gonna go see. I, it. I don't even have the energy for that anymore. Yeah. I don't really. I'll go see it if it's terrible. I'll just be like, eh, guys. But we didn't talk about that other movie, or we didn't at least say it by name. No. All right, John. It shall not be now. Yeah, right, right, exactly. The last show was the last conversation. That's right. All right, John Watts is confirmed to return to direct a sequel to Spider-Man: Homecoming. So the uh, guy who directed Homecoming, he's coming back. So is this going to also be like a, a Marvel Sony joint? Yeah, yes. this is a Marvel Sony joint, and it is the first movie right. that comes outside of the Avengers Four. Yes. Rather than coming inside of it, you know. Dang. <laughs> but no, outside, this will be the kickoff of Phase 4 or Excelsior yeah. or Project X or whatever the fuck we're going to call the the continuation of the yeah. Marvel Cinematic Universe. 21st Century Marvel. That's right. Yes. All right. Earlier this year, um, oh, wait, fuck, I jumped way ahead. Um, Let's talk some Walking Dead. Did people watch the uh, Walking Dead I read that the that spoilers. Uh, oh, so I did too. All right. Well, then everybody who is listening, spoiler alert. Yeah. Turn off now. Spoiler alert. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It, yeah. If you're back, yeah, it still sucks. <clears throat> but Scott has a great theory. He shared it with me earlier. Okay. So, Scott, you're the now a new aficionado. The After I saw there. the character that died, and we're going to spoil it right here, um, it's Carl Grimes, who is the son of Rick Grimes. Eye patch, you know, who pretty much is like the Mad Max torch carrier of the comic book series. They kill him off. Now, there's some rumor that's going around that, well, no, is this not a rumor? I'm sorry. His father went on social media okay. and basically mm -hmm. slammed the fuck out of the, uh, Scott Gimple, who's the producer and now showrunner of Walking Dead, saying that he had it out for uh, Chandler Riggs, I think is the kid that plays yep. um, that plays uh, Carl. Yeah, or coral, you know, coral. and uh, coral. He uh, he uh, said that Scott Gimple had to get, had some shit out for him. 
and um and he fake news carl you know fired him and all this crap and everything because he wanted to go to school or whatever and all this bullshit and that mm-hmm. tweet or facebook post or whatever fucking bullshit he was on was quickly deleted it was but, uh ginger please give me your uh my take on that is give me your, is your hot take uh so in in all of the years of losing every character on that show no one has really come out and gone against that amc gimple walking dead family nobody's ever nobody's ever done that before ever and that show has lost right. a lot of people right so as soon as i saw read this article and i saw that he posted it and then it immediately got taken down i thought to myself i'm like man that's that's just something that that's that's it's out of character for the walking dead family especially somebody who's been on the show since he's been beginning. a kid the beginning so i, I started the the process it in my head and basically because I Because he did not die at the end of the show. First of all, he didn't it's, die. He's still alive. He's, he's got a bite. Well, Scott Gimple came out on The Talking Dead. I'm going to get there. That horrible show. And he said that, um, he said that, uh, uh, the bite will dead. progress. Uh, all right. So this is what, th- I'll give you my, the fast forward take on this. Basically, when you see him with the bite, it's, it's a very clean looking bite. It's not like when walkers bite people, they usually have chunks it's missing. Right? It's slimy. It's very, very, it looks like a bite. Like some a, a human bite, uh, and the fact that he bought a house in Atlanta, just bought a house, and supposedly he had like a three year, three more years left on the show that just got pulled from him. Uh, I'm just quotes. letting you know as you're describing this, my 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 f- f- like my soul is like plummeting. So okay. you're doing your gingerly duty. So please uh, continue. Basically, I think this is Glenn Part Two. I think this is a ruse and. One of two things are going to happen. We'll come back next season, and we'll find out that A, which I, I, I don't think is the truth, but it could be a game changer for the show. Like they said, A, Carl is immune to the Walker disease, and that's the turn point of this show. Or B, which makes way more sense, mm-hmm. he got bit by a Whisperer and not a Walker, in which case he's not going to die, and that's how they segue into the Whisperers. That's a good call. Okay, yeah, you, that's you brought me. Think. You brought me back up. I still have zero interest in watching and that's this fine, show. But but yeah, but I think that that's a good. Uh, and so <clears throat> this little social media play is. Yeah, I, I feel like if if this show it's calculated. Yeah, I think it's calculated. And I think Gimple is very. He's also very calculated with his answers. He, he plans them out, right. and they probably do a thing before the show to answer and question. But uh, if this were a summer finale, I would. I would say, hmm, that's that's maybe it's the truth because this is way too early. But the scene, this is a winter finale, and we only have a month left, a month after. I feel like this is enough hype to get people crazy, yeah, but not enough to that it, it are dies you, are down. Are you still sold on the show? I'm still watching it. Cool, dude. I can't wait to hear your <laughs> updates. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome, man. Yeah, I read an article that is arguing for Gimple's ouster as a result of nah, that father's, no, you know, nah. outcry. Nah. Yeah, I mean, this might all be staged. I think it's shit. all staged. I mean, me too. Ruse, yeah, as so. soon as like Scott said, told me that, I was like, the Glenn of course. Thing, and it's they people kinda... talking. Yes. Yeah. And on top of that, too, is is that that social media tweet riles up the internet community. It so, does. Yeah. It does. Like, you know, assholes that do podcast shows about movies and what? TV. But you know that that is the lowest rated mid-season finale. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, as far as, I, I'll give you this, as far as the rest, it was a good show. But it wasn't a good finale. But it was a good... They haven't had a good finale in fucking four seasons. Those finales always fucking suck. Uh, They're horrible. uh, Every fucking time. I disagree with that, but go ahead. God, it's fucking stupid bullshit. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter, dude. Look, you you still got 50 years of Walking Dead, according to AMC. So there you go. Good luck with that. (laughs) Just think about it. It, 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 You'll die with The Walking Dead. Not to be reincarnated, so... Oh, it'll be almost 100. Good there for it is. Us. Right. All right. Creed 2 has signed Stephen Capel Jr. to direct. He's an indie film director who directed his first movie, The Land, in 2016, and was also director of the internet show, The Class. Ryan Coogler will stay on as executive producer. He hasn't officially signed on because he's wrapping Black Panther, but he's pretty much given the indicator, yeah, I'm all in. Um, it's Good. really interesting to watch the whole thing with uh with the Creed two with the Creed sequel, 
because Sylvester Stallone like goes out and says all this shit and they keep basically knocking his ass back down to like actor status, you know? So, Oh, we're, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that and all good. that. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, we but, haven't had a good, we haven't had a so, good one in a long time. So there yeah. it is, you know, but, but he's not doing shit. He's just going to fuck. Wasn't he going to direct it? And now he's, he not. was going to direct it and they knocked him out of the chair probably because it dude, it's Stallone, man. I mean, look, yeah. I got mad respect for the guy. Yeah. Especially with his story, you know, but I mean, the, it's the problem with these old fucking actors, uh, these old directors, man, they got old sensibility and it's that eighties macho bullshit with Stallone dude yeah. directing the expendables a movie that's themed on that is fantastic. Right. But doing something like this, especially with what Ryan Coogler did with Creed. Yeah, yeah. It, this this is a movie that needs finesse, but this is one thing that's worrying me. They're saying that Adonis Creed is going to fight the son of Ivan Drago, which I don't like to begin with, but this adds even more fuel to the fire. Oh. They're rumored that they are interested in Brock Lesnar to play Ivan Drago's kid. Mm. Uh, I, don't, yeah. I don't. I don't really like that idea. I don't either. He's not a. He's not. He's a, good a actor. fucking fantastic wrestler and MMA guy, but dude, he, that that guy, he can't cut a fucking promo, much less right. act. Man, come right. on, dude. He's no Rock. <laughs> no. Exactly. And speaking of the Rock, uh, surprisingly, Jumanji: Welcome to the Jungle. They're saying is getting fucking great reviews. Yeah. I mean, everybody. The Rock. Everybody who uh. Yeah, but dude, uh, the Rock. It, it's out, right? Is, is it, it out? out? Is it I, out? I don't know if oh, it's out yet or not. Oh, okay. This week. Yeah, it might be next week, but they've done the they've done the uh, Star Wars next week. Oh no, maybe it. Uh, I don't know. I don't fucking know. But, I don't know but either. look, regardless. But I was just shocked because people are saying it's a good movie, and and I mean, there's nothing to do. look. The Rock stars in shit. It still makes money, but they're saying that this is a good movie, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll I'll probably catch it on video. Yeah, you know, what's normally a, I would just ignore it. But. What's a bad Rock movie that you like? A bad rock movie? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, a bad I, movie that you like because The Rock is in it. I, I really have. I mean, The Scorpion King. I mean, I, I enjoyed no. it when I saw it, but it fucking sucks. I mean, it's basically a it's rips off every scene yeah. of of like every like. I mean, there's a scene where it is a direct rip off of the Gong Escape from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Huh. I mean, it's exact. Like, I mean. I don't know whether that was an homage or if that was just yeah. fucking just ripping like, them off, or just ripped them off straight out. You know, I yeah. like San Andreas. That's I, I didn't see it. guilty pleasure. I saw it, and it's not. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it was goofy. It was not plausible, but solid effects and uh, the Rock was solid Rock in it. Was you know, solid in well, it. it looks it looks like it's going to be dog shit. But I have to say, the special effects for that Rampage movie actually look good. I think the CGI they looks do. good for that movie. I think it's going to be dog I shit. Think, I the don't effects know. look great. I, you know, I don't know what that movie's about. I mean, I know what it's about, but I don't. Yeah. I know oh, what it's based on, I know what but I don't know what it's on, about either. Know, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. Yeah, I, That's I, one of those movies, like Battleship, when they're like, we're going to do Battleship. I'm like, that's oh, a fucking terrible idea. And they did it anyway, and I still feel like that's a terrible idea. It is. So the Rampage movie is like, didn't you learn your lesson with Battleship? But maybe this is something totally different. I mean, there's an argument that can be made of saying, you know, a good video game, something that's good based on a video we, game, but something based on, like, a stand-up arcade game is, like, even worse. And what, it's I mean, Rampage. Yeah. It's not like it's Centipede or Pac-Man or one of the, the fan favorites or it, Tron, for that matter. It's... It's it's rampage. Yeah, I mean, I and mean, that's the thing. All those games were just kind of like you know, essentially they, Donkey Kong. They they were button mashers, yeah, man. That's yeah. all they were, you know. And I mean, you mash them up. They really had no storyline up to up to <clears throat> outside of okay, look, you play monsters that break shit. I mean, that's the synopsis that's of the game. That's it. Don't you get know, don't eat the people. What's funny is I watched the rampage trailer after you pretty much shit on it, Scott, and I was like, okay. And for the first half of the trailer, I was in, where The Rock is like, he's my friend. That's it. That's what I'm saying. Like, I loved that. But then as soon as soon as it cuts to him saying, let's go save the world, I was out. I went, yeah, well, oh, yeah. there should be a moratorium on that line. Yeah, right. No, I agree with you. Fuck that. Yeah, it's the same thing with the uh, with the stolen joke that you talk about all the time. 
Bubba, Bubba. Oh, no, no, no. You go. You go. Yeah, there should be a moratorium right. on that as well. <laughs> yeah, it, it should have died with the uh, with Ghostbusters 2016, but I'm sure we'll see it some yep. more. All right, our sexual harassment report. All right, Brian Singer claims that he was fired from the Queen biopic because the studio wasn't willing to allow him to take a leave of absence to deal with what he calls a sick family member. We don't, we don't know if it's parents or siblings. We don't right. know. But uh, in the past, Singer has pulled disappearing acts from Superman Returns and the X-Men movies. His production company's deal with Fox was getting ready to expire, and they're not renewing that either. So in addition mm-hmm. to 86 ing his production company and firing him from the Queen's bi- from the Queen biopic, he's done. Um, there was also some rumors that there was friction between him and Rami Malek. I read that too. But he came out on social media and said, um, hey, man, everything's cool. You know, yeah, we had some disagreements, but we worked together fine. And I don't understand why the fuck they would do this. But now we have allegations that he raped an underage boy. Now, he's been in this before. Is this a recent allegation? Recent, yeah. yeah. This is a recent allegation. Now, he's been in this shit before, but they basically blew holes through through the other kid's story and mm. shot that whole thing down to yeah, the point to where... They say it's where, the same lawyer representing this kid, too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... It's a different time. It's a know? different time, and it's different shit. See, the, initially with that first case, the judge threw the case out, and then the kid went and hired another lawyer... And like a week later, that lawyer said, fuck this, I'm out. Right. So that that kid's thing, you know, blew mm. up. So I don't know. We'll see what happens, whether this is going to come to light or not. But um, the good news is that Dexter Fletcher, who was the director of Eddie the Eagle, which was fucking fantastic. Yeah, it is. He's taken over the reins as the director. So. Oh, cool. Go. Yeah. That's I'm interesting. Glad. I was I was worried that that movie was going to get flush down the toilet again i think they know that they have a money maker with that movie and they got a lot of interest and i mean freddie mercury's a fucking icon dude yeah. and i mean yeah. it, they I, they that's going to be a good movie here's the thing about that whole story is that brian singer on paper is still a big fucking deal i mean yeah he, sure he produced house he made the x-men what they are so you know you got to figure they know something that we don't. Oh, absolutely. You know? right. I think there's something big that's coming down the yeah. pipe because you wouldn't see him go to this extreme yep. to where they just cut all association with him. Unless, let's take the the point that they might just be tired of his fucking bullshit. Yeah. They could be that too. Well, and 20th Century Fox, which we'll get to at some point, uh, is being bought by Disney. And maybe Disney's like, you can keep that deal or whatever. Yeah, maybe, we're, yeah. We're out. Yeah, that. that's it. So, all right. Um, in our another entry into our sexual harassment report, Danny Masterson, who um was on that '70s show, the uh, ranch. he was on the ranch on Netflix. They fired him from the show, and apparently, he's really fucking pissed off. Yeah, because uh, they're saying that they're you know prove it. Which I mean, dude, look for for most people, yeah, prove it. Where I start, when one person comes out and says something, that's one thing. But when you got like multiple motherfuckers coming through and saying this happened, this happened, this happened. And it yeah. all seems credible. Mm-hmm. I mean, dude. Yeah. I mean, you got to do what you got to do. So Netflix will be all right. So that's yeah. where it's at. Yeah. Oh, so Netflix, will the ranch. Netflix so the is going to be exactly, just yeah. fine. And so will the ranch. No one's going to miss him. All right. Well, let's hit a quick topic here before we end off the show. Um, Real quick, you know, Star Wars coming out this week. Um, I'm going to be uh, all of us seeing a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, all right, so I'll see you Thursday. John will see you Friday. You'll see it Saturday. Yep. By the time that we meet next time, we'll be able to talk about it in depth. Yep. Um, I'm I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm just going to give a blanket statement. The reviews have been really fucking good. It's Star Wars. I've read all the no. This is rave reviews for this movie. I, I'm not going to say arguably any, the best in the series. I'm not going to say yeah, but not reason. but. Everybody says arguably best in the series, yes. but if you look at the of what they reviewed and what they said about the movie, there's good backup. Do I think that this will be the best movie in the series? Fuck no. It ain't going to beat Empire Strikes Back or New Hope. But, I right. mean, I think that it's going to be a quality movie, and based on what I've read, I think it's going to be better than The Force Awakens, and I actually enjoyed that movie. So, uh, Yeah. The Child and Me 
is going to say, no, it will never be better than Empire or New Hope. But the adult in me goes, I hope it is better than all of those movies. Yeah. Because I, I, would, I would like, oh. to, I want to see a good movie. They're going I to. always, I'm pulling for those guys. I want, Pull. I want everything that they come out with next to be better than what, what we previously yeah. saw. But it's, it's evident to me that there's a reason Ryan Johnson has been yes. given the opportunity to direct whatever the next three films are. Oh, that's good. Good. Can't you, wait. You you did read what he said about that, right? I didn't. No. I, I didn't read reason. I didn't read too much in No, anything. no, 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 no. I mean what he said about what his next three films would not be, which is Knights of the Old Republic. Oh yeah, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, I did yeah. see. And okay. that's good. Man, look, I don't want to see any fuck I want them to do something entirely yeah. new. All new. Nothing that's dragged from anything that was previously legends or yeah, I want to I... see something entirely brand new. New Hope, when I first saw that, was brand new to me. Empire, brand right. new to me. Yep. Jedi, brand new. All all that stuff. Do it again. Make that magic again. Yeah, no, I, I right agree, and, and I'm cool with that. Um, Really quick, uh, we'll throw a couple of things out here. We did it for the last movie. Let's do it this time. Uh, just one prediction. Does anybody have a prediction of anything that they think is going to happen in the movie? In this one, I have no predictions. You have no predictions? Nope. I have none, and you, the reason being is that so much has happened to lead up to this film. Uh, I don't, and I don't know that I want to predict anything because I feel like I've made it this far. I've made it this far. I, I'll tell you what my prediction is based on, I and I've tried to pull a Scott and avoid reading reviews, but there were... Okay, I have one. Go ahead. There, there was one that said that there were audible gasps, quote-unquote, in the film. So my guess is that uh, Ryan Johnson, that the first movie was a setup and this is the head fake. Like this is where shit we don't see coming goes down. That's the vibe that I'm getting. So it's empire. I mean, empire. I'm not, I'm not not saying that in a shitty way. I'm saying like that when we got new hope and it was a setup and an empire was the, yeah, look out. Shit. He's his father, yeah, right. Right, right, you yeah. know. I'm only going with one prediction, and I'm not going to say who, and I don't know anything. I haven't, like, really, re- I've read the reviews. I-, I haven't read, like, I haven't even read a non-spoiler review. I read the critics' Twitter fucking shit. Right. Where it's, like, two sentences, whether it was good or not. Right. I am going to predict, I'm going to go with either Poe Dameron or Luke Skywalker dying in this movie. It's going to be my my prediction in this. All right, I'll give you mine, and it's just you asked for it. My prediction is that Luke Skywalker turns out to be evil. Okay, there mm. it is. So let's see how it plays out. So we'll know All next right. time we get together. We'll make sure to see if our predictions were correct. I yeah. hope mine isn't. I hope no. I, yeah, I don't want any of the predictions to be correct because I want to be so surprised. Yeah, yeah. We'll see how it plays out, and we will give a full review when we come back with but, spoilers. Uh, yeah. With spoilers, this will have spoilers too. Yeah, I like I like what like, like Snoke is uh, Qui Qui Gon Jinn or whatever Qui Gon Jinn yeah. Qui Gon Jinn. That would be something no one saw coming. Ah, uh, I don't uh, know. I think that they've established so much with that character. Oh, I, I know. Mean, I don't know. There isn't any fucking telling, but I don't know. I'm expecting a lot of swerves and. Yep. You know, yeah, a good that, time. That's the the only weird thing that does get me about this is so many people are like, no spoilers, no spoilers, no spoilers oh, yeah. for this film, where nobody's ever done that for the other films before. So it, it one worries official me that trailer that says one particular no spoilers. one yeah. particular review that I read, the guy punctuated his post with saying, "Avoid spoilers at all cost." Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this well, guy was pretty serious about it, but. Stay I'm off gonna, the internet, buddy. Yeah, I'm going I'm <laughs> to stay I'm off. Out, I've, do, I've done my shit. I've done my due diligence to uh, do the research for the show today. I'm not going to be doing that again until after this movie comes out. So uh, we'll be giving a full review on the next show. And we'll be giving a non-spoiler review because... Oh, a non-spoiler nah, review. we're going to yeah. do a non-spoiler review on the next one. So, yes, indeed. All right. All right. All right. All righty. Well, cool enough. We appreciate you guys listening. Jump over to ppvguys.com. You can check out previous episodes. Also, subscribe at iTunes. Please leave us a review. Don't be an asshole. Leave us five stars, not two, not three, not four. Leave five, please. We also ask that you do the same for our friends over at Scary Thoughts and 
Not Real Radio. Thanks for listening and seeing.